Hi everyone. It'd be fair to say that Insta360's marketing campaign for the Ace Pro has been pretty polarizing. There have been some immensely positive reviews and there've also been a backlash of criticism. And so it makes it very hard for a normal user to wade through all that and to come to a decision as to the camera. I am a normal user and I thought I'd share my experiences over about six weeks and about seven scuba dives with this camera and I thought I'd compare it as well in how I find using it compared to the GoPro Hero 11 that it's replaced. So a bit of background, my name is Bernard, I'm an Aussie, I'm based in Eastern Canada, I'm not a vlogger, influencer, reviewer and actually even though I speak a lot publicly for work, this is the first spoken video that I've ever done. What I am however is a scuba diver and I started using action cameras about 18 months, two years ago to record my underwater adventures. So I think I'm much more of a typical normal user than one of the online professionals who's commenting on this camera. Just a bit of profile in terms of how I use it. I'd say I use my camera for between 20 and 30 dives each year. They're usually done in groups of four to eight dives while I'm on a holiday or traveling. I then edit my videos soon after the groups of dives, basically with the aim of posting on socials and showing people what I've been up to in the past days, so without much delay. And then my camera goes back in my gearbox and it stays there unused for a couple of months before my next trip. So all that to say I'm not a camera geek, I'm not a super user, I'm not even a daily year-round user. I'm an occasional task-based user, which I think is much more representative of people who buy and use action cameras in the everyday life. But first, the bottom line up front. Am I happy with my Ace Pro? Absolutely yes. And am I happier with my Ace Pro for my application than I was with the Hero 11 that I had before it? Totally, unequivocally, yes. It's a good solid unit. It's compatible with all the action camera accessories I need for my use. Of course, most importantly, its dive case seems to work just fine. Its image performance, particularly low light and white balance, although I'll touch on both of those things a bit more later, are better suited to scuba diving than the Hero 11 was. And I find it relatively easy to edit decent little videos using the Insta360 app and in that environment. And really importantly, the battery life is great. So my profile would be to shoot around 50 clips in a day, each of about 30 seconds, and they'd take place over the course of three dives, which is a typical uh, diving day, I guess. I've never finished with less than at least half of my battery full after a full day of that profile. A couple of other points, reviewers, have uh, talked about how fragile the flip-up screen is. Now, the rare times I've used it, it does seem pretty solid to me. I'm actually using it right now as I film this. Reality though is that this is a total non-issue for divers as the screen doesn't flip up when the Ace Pro is in a dive case. Same issue for the non-removable lens cover. The unit's always in and protected by its dive case underwater as well as on the boat. So the risk of scratching it is non-existent. But in any case, I think I've seen recent YouTube videos that the lens cover can actually be switched out with a tool. So this issue has gone away. I want to talk about low light performance a little bit more, especially in my preferred mode of 4K30. And the reason for that is that that's where I get the benefit of auto HDR. This allows me to travel and dive with just the camera itself and no external light. So my entire rig is this. Dive casing and short but extendable selfie stick. With my Hero 11, I had to use external lights to get both detail and color, which meant a default rig a lot more like this one. Now, admittedly, that's still a very small setup compared to a full professional camera, but it's not as handy as I get with the Ace Pro. It also comes with the problem of mixing different light temperatures, the very blue ambient light, and then the warmer light from the artificial 
uh, light sources. This makes white balance adjustment much more tricky than if you just had ambient light. And of course, I have none of these issues with the Ace Pros. I simply don't need another light source at those kind of normal depths. Now, it's not all good. I do wish for a couple of things in terms of Ace Pro settings. Firstly, please, please, please give me auto HDR on 4K60. This means that I would not have to compromise in slow motion and still maintain the auto HDR uh, impact on my light performance and dynamic range. Secondly, while white balance is way better than on GoPro for underwater, auto still does vary within a dive and within a clip a fair bit, and that can be visible in footage. So what I'd love is an auto and hold setting where the camera takes its white balance at the start of a clip, but then holds the same white balance throughout. This means that there's a standard baseline that you can edit from in doing color regrading or, or uh, touch-ups. Another alternative would be to able to set an upper and lower limit for white balance. So for example, if there was a way that I could make the camera be auto white balance, but only between say 4,000 and 6,000 Kelvin, then I think I'd use that all the time. Turning to the app, frankly, I really like it. I'll mainly talk about editing and publishing features, but just want to mention that I do find the community and the sharing side of things pretty neat, actually. The Insta360 app is pretty intuitive and, to my mind, better than the GoPro Quick application. I find it really easy to edit the individual clips and then to assemble them into a uh, short video in the way that I want. I also like that there is dedicated AquaVision 2.0 setting, which auto detects that footage is from underwater and gives you the option to enable it. But actually, for my own uses, I usually prefer the combination of the other advanced filter they have called Color Plus, set to quite low, but then with some tweaks to tone and tint to get the look that I want. Call me weird, but the idea that underwater video should still have a fair bit of blue in it does make basic sense to me. Aside from that, my other gripes with the app are really very small details. I wish there was start and end of video options in the transitions menu rather than just transitions between video clips. I wish there was an apply to all button for transitions so that I didn't have to set them in between every single clip. I wish you could create a template made up of multiple settings as a single custom filter for one click application to clips or even to multiple selected clips as a starting point. And I wish you could select and store default export settings rather than having to change every time from the preset 1080p. Very much first world problems though. So overall, for what I use it for, this is a great little camera. It does what I want and it's a step forward from what I used before. I like the app environment and I find it easy to use. And I don't think any of my gripes are major or not fixable in future updates. So look, again, I've tried to make this video to try and give some thought, not as a formal reviewer, but just as a typical amateur user. I hope it's been useful to some of you, and I can't wait to see your work online. Cheers.